Hello, I'm Beardy Blocks. Welcome back to my channel. Now, I've been looking at the comments in this in the last video. I do apologize for the shoddy mic. Uh, it is a matter of just getting another piece of equipment, which I am going to do very soon. So we've just got to bear with that. Same with the picture quality. I think I just need a PS Plus. Then I can record in 1080p rather than this 7, 720 um, but yeah until then we'll just we'll just bear with it but then uh, I think I think it's good enough quality to be able to give you an idea of, of, of or at least coach you to being better riders now with these tutorials I am going to be splitting them up I said I was going to do both in a single tutorial but I think the super bikes are just a different beast and they need a tutorial of their own so that's what they'll get uh, so we're going to be going with the 600s to start off with. I'm going to give you a brief sort of rundown on handling and how to get it around the corners. A few techniques that I use to stop myself plowing through a hedge at 200 mile an hour. And then we're going to hit sector one. Now sector one is basically from the start finish line. So the grandstand until just after Union Mills, which is about three miles into the course. Now it is a highly contested sector in terms of lap uh, positions, you know, leaderboards. Uh, I'm currently 26th in the world, I believe. Now I will try and beat that today, but I can't promise anything because I have had a lot of practice on this sector. But either way, if you can get under a 119, I think it's about 118.9 something that is about the 100th place mark. So if you want to get on the top 100 leaderboard, that's what you've got to aim for. Aim for the 1 minute 18. And, and I will demonstrate a 118 at the very least today. So moving on to the basics. So settings now. Some of these are down to personal preference and some of these are important. Now with ABS, I personally feel that it feels very unnatural with it turned off. It does a strange sort of gravity defying kind of motion when you lock the front wheel up and I just don't like it. I don't like it so I keep it on medium. Um, with traction control, now this is one of the important ones, turn it off because it doesn't make it any easier having it on low it just makes it bog down in the corners and it will still buck you off if, if, if you're taking the mickey with it so I quite like having the traction control off because that coupled with uh, the anti wheelie um, put on uh, low level or off as it is here it's um, it, it, it drifts out in the corners you're leaning forward so you're kind of you're, you're encouraging the drift because there's no weight on the back wheel so so you can drift it out of corners so the traction control and the anti-stoppy being turned on to either off or low allows you to do that technique nicely and and yeah uh, my advice is turn turn the traction control off and if you start sliding just either ride the slides out or let off and try to get grip back in the uh, in the back wheel um, with anti wheelie I've got it uh, anti wheelie anti stoppy I've got it turned on low here sometimes it can catch you out sometimes and it's in strange spots as well you'll be braking somewhere and last thing you you expect the you the back wheel will lift off the ground so I generally keep it on on low just to give myself a little bit of help racing line another one of the really important ones I feel is turning it off because I know it's intimidating not especially a track of 37 plus miles uh, you know you get lost but you've got a little map down in the corner and the racing line on here it, it, it teaches you bad habits you just rely on that racing line which is an extremely conservative racing line it tells you to go extremely slow it tells you to be braking when you should be accelerating and yeah it's just not a very nice racing line it gets right in the way and 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 any racing line in any sim game it, it, it teaches you the bad habit of relying on that racing line whereas really you should be looking for points of reference on the side of the track to uh, to tell you when to be braking and turning into corners and stuff like that so always to always turn that off um a break a break method i'm on combined at the moment i'm thinking of turn, going to split but no, uh, we'll, we'll we'll see when i finally get a, get get that nice lap in that puts me comfortably on the the nice part of the leaderboard i will probably change to split just to see if i can get used to it because i quite like it in real life when you see them sliding into uh into into parliament and places like that on the back on the back break and then the other the other important one here is transmission now with transmission 
if you do it in automatic it's very it's a very aggressive automatic it keeps it's too high in the revs a lot of the time and you want to be in control of that i know it's another one of these ones that may seem intimidating if you're used to automatic it just it's too much to concentrate on but you don't even have to concentrate after a while you do it automatically the changing of gears and you've just got so much more control over the bike because on certain bits where you don't really, you don't want all that power at your fingertips sometimes it's a bad thing having too much power at your fingertips and it can be good to sort of short shift before a corner sometimes and and go around the corner in cruise mode as opposed to full cane mode so i, I kind of like to keep it in manual um and 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 i do think that's a biggie so the biggies on here are really i would say the traction control is a biggie the racing line is a biggie and the transmission i think everything else you can really go with your own preference but yeah i think if you want the the fast lap times all of them things that i just stated need to be off now we'll move on to the bikes now when it comes to the bikes i personally like the cbr the dan hegarty uh cbr uh, uh, but it's, it is up to you. But this is this is uh, the best all rounder. The Triumph is really nice. It handles right, really nicely. There's some sectors that the, the Triumph is probably maybe even the best one to go with. But for this first sector, I would say strongly it's probably this CBR 600, and the Dan Hegarty one is my my personal favourite. So yeah. So moving on next. Right, setting off on the super bikes, it's actually quite hard. You'll probably end up on your back a few times if you try this sort of clutch kick kind of method, this sort of uh, kicking it from neutral into first. But on super bikes, if you really want, you can go full throttle and just kick it into first. As long as you're leaning forward, you shouldn't fall off the back. Now, if you do change, if you do really want a fast time, then change up at about 15,000 RPM. But you're only talking a matter of a couple of meters, a couple of milliseconds that you'll be ahead. It's really not a great deal, but I generally aim to aim for the 15,000 RPM mark. But yeah, and setting off, as I said, 600s are relatively easy. Next. Yeah, so steering. Now it's very different to a driving game in terms of a car driving game. You'll find it takes a lot longer to turn a bike down to its full steering, you know, to its fullest potential. Whereas in a car game, it takes all a matter of a quarter of a second or so. Whereas it probably takes maybe twice as long to get it right down. Eh, maybe maybe a bit less than that. But you know, it's, it's it's significantly longer time it takes you to turn on this. The response time of the steering. You have to take that into account with corners. So if you look here when I'm coming through Union Mills. I'm, I stopped turning before I've even finished going around this right hander so I'm straightening the bike up getting ready to tip it back in for the next apex which is the left hander and yeah so you've really got to preempt your corners like that and the other thing preempting corners here we have uh, Balagheri if you see what I'm doing here I'm using small taps to bring the bike over to about 10% the bike doesn't really start handling until you really start leaning it in so it allows you to tip it over that little bit just to get yourself a head start on tipping the bike over to the angle that you want for Balagheri and once you see that apex you've got more of an idea where you are in the road so you can commit to the corner and the other thing I will add as well be aware where the top of your body is you know I aim for apexes left right and center and 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 a lot of the time you've got a nice curb on the side that you can or pavement where you can get your body over it and it doesn't matter but if we look here uh, this is Handley's I'm um, coming in here this wall on the right hand side if I come in and take the apex as I'm coming out the left hand if I aim for that apex like you would in a car then then I am going to hit my head on this wall or I'm going to have to wait until I've passed the wall before I steer in which case I'm probably going to run wide and go into the wall on the exit so yeah you've just got to be aware where your body is in steering um, yeah and, wh and where, what angle you've got the bike at and stuff but yeah steering it is something that does come to you after a while if it feels clunky just, just persevere because it does it does feel nice after a while believe me next so throttle control now i think this is probably the most important one here because what a lot of people will do is they're coming into a corner so they'll let off completely now letting off completely it totally disweights the bike you in it, in it it makes for some funny handling i mean if you look here this is laurel bank not enough throttle on this plowed into the wall at the end it didn't keep the bike stable there's a lot of corners like this another one here this is uh this is greba um yeah this is 
the throttle just balances the bike and you've got to use the bottom of the throttle to balance the bike around the corners and stuff. If you're coming into a corner off the throttle, there's every chance that you're going to be losing the back end. Sometimes it can be quite spectacular, as you can see there, I, I, I lost the back end there. And, um, and yeah, yeah, it can be quite spectacular, but it's not very safe. And if you try, and it's not very fast either, you look at the exit speed and it's significantly slower. Um, yeah, so keeping that throttle on just allows you to keep traction, it keeps it stable and everything like that, keeps the bike balanced. And yeah, you'll find it a lot easier trailing the throttle and especially in the downshifts and stuff like that. Um, it's very similar to if you play sim racing games, uh, if you uh, use heel and toe technique, which is basically a technique that you use when changing down through gears. And it's to balance the revs to the speed that you're doing so that it doesn't lock up the back wheel and you don't have any, keeps, keeps the car balanced when you're going through corners. And this is exactly the same principle. And there's a lot of corners on this where they're very complicated sections and you need that extra control. And, and not being in the full throttle and just, just slightly out of it is, is, is sometimes beneficial. There's a lot of sectors, as you can see here. These are all corners that benefit this, uh, this end of, um, this is Kurt Michael, we had tail end of Kurt Michael. This is all just balancing sixth gear on the throttle and the same here, fifth gear being balanced on the throttle. Not quite flat out until I can see my exit. And um, yeah, yeah, so just be respectful with the throttle, but at the same time, don't be too scared of it. You kind of need a bit of throttle in most corners, aside from things like, um, you know, the um, hairpin at Ramsey, perhaps, I don't know. Um, even even them, you, you're a bit more stable on a trickler throttle, but then, um, yeah, just, uh, yeah. Next. Braking. So you want to do as little as possible of the braking. Now, engine braking is a hell of a lot more stable, so if you're coming into a corner and you only need to lose a little bit of speed, I wouldn't even touch the brakes. I would just either hold back on the throttle or bang it down a gear or something like that to lose your speed. The brakes can leave you quite unstable. If there's any sort of undulation or anything like that, it can really buck you off. And so brakes, I really try to use them, as I said, as little as possible. Next. Okay, so weight distribution. We spoke a little bit about this in the settings, but I think it's very important to turn all the uh, all the driving aids for the wheelie and stuff off because it makes me, it's taught me a few different techniques for different corners, and it really does, um, especially when it comes to braking, I found there's a lot of places where when I had all the settings turned on a lot higher, all the anti-wheelie and anti-stoppy, I found I was a lot more complacent with these braking zones and there was a lot of braking zones, especially the one into Balaf, where where I was just braking a little bit too hard. Sometimes the back wheel was little would, would just swerve me out and even even with the uh, with the anti stop on it was still happening. And I just found when I turned all that sort of stuff off it made me just uh, or turned it down even in the case of anti stoppy. It just made me concentrate a little bit more. So try and if you're coming into a corner just try and think where your weight is or if you know there's a bump somewhere I mean over the top of Crosby uh, the jump at Crosby just before I'm getting to the jump I will push forward but you've always got to remember like I said with the steering there's a spectrum you may, you may push forward and you don't see anything you think that you're leaning forward but your man has a, has a, has a sort of quarter of a second where he's making that transition from sitting stable in the center of the bike to being leaning forward and 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 yeah you've, you've got to take that into account with a lot of these things so if you know you've got a big jump coming up you want to get over the wheel front wheel nice and early just so it gives you your character whoever you've chosen to get over those handlebars and keep that front wheel on the ground right so now we're, i think we've really hit up all of the basics i mean if anyone's got any questions put them in the in the in the comments but i think we're ready to start taking a look at this beast that is the first three miles of the tt track so let's have a look okay so the first part of of sector one is grandstand to quarter bridge which is flat out but as you can see here here i'm taking thread in the needle as they say now if you take a look down here at the speed as i get down to the bottom of bray hill and over ago's leap yeah, we're doing 196 now if we just back up again it doesn't you don't benefit in this from taking that racing line sometimes if it's covered with bumps as it is over St Ninian's so as you can see here I'm taking a bit of a wider line over it so now when we get down to here down to Bray Hill 
as you can see we're doing another three mile an hour faster now i know it doesn't sound a lot but that three mile an hour over that big long straight it all adds up and by the time you get to the bottom you're talking a significant i call a significant distance by the time you get down to quarter bridge and now with this quarter bridge as you can see before you get to quarter bridge you got this horrible kink i can't even remember it what it's called but I found that the faster you go over this, the better, but you don't want to go too fast because otherwise it's you've got to stabilise the bike for after that corner before you get to this braking zone. Now, if you just let off a little bit, as you come round it, you get a little bit of a jump. As you land, give it a little blip of throttle. A, that keeps it stable, and B, if you start braking straight away, you'll be braking a bit too early for the corner. It's still got a little bit of, of juice left in that straight. So give it a little bit of beam coming up to the corner and then heavy braking, maybe trail the brake, trail the throttle a little bit as you're coming into it, but just to keep the bike stable. But once it's once it feels stable, you can probably let off the throttle a little bit. This is a heavy braking corner down into first. Now cut out, as, as you can see there, you want to cut to the right, then to the left, taking as much of the road as you can so that you've got a nice big, nice big, uh, nice wide attack line to that apex. As soon as you come into that apex, you want to be on the throttle as early as possible and take it nice and wide right out to the zebra. So now we can have the flat out blip down to Braddon Bridge is next. Now, here's Braddon. Braddon is a bit of a bit of a pain. It's a second gear. So as you're coming into Braddon, you're looking for this, this this dead man's land. If you don't know what dead man's land is, it's, it's that, it's this little bit in the middle where you're not supposed to drive. Um, you're looking for that now on super bikes. I usually break on that now. Well, now on the on the super sports, I break just after it, sort of there, and then down into second gear, cut it in. Now this is another one of them corners, like I said, in the, about steering. You've got to be careful where your body is. Very easy to clip yourself on that inside. And then flip it back up, and as soon as you flipped it back up, and you can feel that the bike's going the way that you want it to, you can open right out. There's a big wide exit on this one. They give you loads of room. But if you do use all the room, you've got to kind of look at it as a bit of a chicane on the on the exit. Uh, you've got to turn a little bit left, otherwise you end up shooting off the right hand side of the track. And that's that corner. So then on down the hill, on down up the road, this is Snugborough Hill. Now this can be a little bit of a nasty one in the super bikes, but yeah, super sports, really nice and easy. Just go flying over it, bit of a wheelie over it. Then coming in to Union Mills now. Union Mills, you've got this little curb on the right hand side, get nice and close to that, bang it down a gear, as you're tipping it into this corner corner in fifth gear you should be at this point, tra trailing the throttle as I said, as I said in the basics, uh, as you're coming into it, watch your, watch your head on this corner, it's almost better to take a wide line sometimes, just because just I used to catch that all the time, I, I don't do it quite so much anymore. Once you round it, you flip it back. Use the fourth gear. The change down to fourth gear that can often flip the bike back over, help you turn the bike back over, and give you a bit more less time that it takes you to change the angle of your bike. Flipping it over, trickling the throttle for a, for a second until until it's found its found its place. It's got a couple of strange apexes on this one. It's not a it's not a smooth curve at all. So just be aware it does come out. Don't take that first apex. Don't track that first apex too tight because it does come out again. Um, and then, yeah, you need to be straightening the bike up again before you can even see the exit. Do be careful coming off of this. Sometimes it can wheelie and sometimes if you're taking this very tight line close to this wall, the back wheel can lift off the ground a bit and leave you with a bit less acceleration. Sometimes you're better off not taking that apex quite as tight and coming out a bit because you keep the back wheel on the floor a bit more giving you more acceleration out out of union mills and that is pretty much union mills so let's have a look at that without any sort of editing i'll shut up and let's take a look at it
Well, I take it back. I beat it. I beat it after all. Maybe I should throw down the gauntlet to myself a bit more often. So uh, yeah. So where are we? So I reckon Tuesday I will bring out Sector Two. So uh, yeah, tune in for that one. Get practicing on Sector One. Hopefully, I w I won't be number eighteen anymore. I I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be knocked off by one of you lot. That'd be nice. Give me somebody to chase. But uh, yeah, so I've got seven strangers to go send a smug message to. So I'm going to get off. So bye bye from me and bye bye from Dan Hegarty. Dan, do you want to wave goodbye? Oh, for crying out loud, Dan. I meant wave with your hand.